Hey there you guys, welcome back to the Duggan Racecraft YouTube channel. On this episode, this Coyote Swap Cobra gets twin turbos. Okay guys, so we're finally back in the garage and this is the mythical Cobra that I've been telling you guys about for the last couple months. Just a quick refresher, what we're going to be doing with this one, we're going to be making a twin turbo kit basically from scratch uh, for this Coyote. Uh, this is for a friend of mine, his name's Derek. He's had this car pretty much, I would, I would consider it since it was new. This is a 1998 model and he's owned it since 2000 or 2001 I want to say. Has this very nice paint job on it. I'm pretty sure he told me this is a GM color, probably frost white if I had to guess. Very nice color though. Um, for those of you that don't know, I do work on other people's vehicles. Um, uh, Derek's a very smart guy and he would be doing all this on his own, but he is training to be a sheriff right now. So he's away at the academy and wanted this done in the meantime. He originally bought this turbo kit from somebody on Facebook Marketplace, I think it was, or one of the Facebook groups. And he originally wanted me to make that turbo kit work. I was all for that up until I saw this kit and I told him that basically the, our best bet's gonna be to use what we have as a template, but basically make it all over again. The problem with it is, this is just one of the hot side pipes. So this end goes to the manifold on the engine. This is the turbo flange, wastegate obviously. As you can see, it's just chewed up. It's super rusty because this is just mild steel. The welds aren't that great. He originally wanted me to just fix what was here. As you can see, these welds are just rusting away. Not super great welds in the flange there. Hole right there. Hole right there. And I've already tapped this one out a couple times, but I've tapped, if you just tap it on the ground, a whole bunch of rust would fall out. Obviously you don't want that going into your very nice precision turbos. Obviously there's gonna be two of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use what's already here to get the turbos in the front of the car. These turbos are gonna be hanging off the front. So where we're gonna start this one at is we have to first swap the K member. This is a TMZ K member. There's currently a BMR K member in the car. I don't know if you can see it from the top very well, but down in there, you can kind of see it. There's a gap in between the engine mount and the cradle for the K member. So the engine is, the bolts are bottomed out in these holes down all the way, but they're not sitting up against these pads here. And the other downside to this K-member is this forward facing turbo manifold won't fit. So the first thing we're gonna do, drop the K-member, put this new K-member in, but while that K-member is out, I also need to take the oil pan off and weld in these bungs. This is a dash 10 weldable bung steel, so I can weld it into the steel oil pan. So I won't show you guys the whole time with this project, mainly just going to be checking in from step to step to show you guys how I'm doing this. Uh, since this is a customer car, I'm going to try and get this done in a timely manner. I was supposed to start on this probably about a month and a half ago. But you saw how things went with the 82 GT. That car just wanted to fight me, and I had a whole bunch of school stuff come up recently. But as of today, I am a college graduate. So now I'm going to start dumping all my time into this. This should be probably a 40 to 60 hour project at most. Uh, just because I work a little bit slower than most people will. So without further ado, let's drop that K-member and take that oil pan off. Okay guys, so we we're working back on the Cobra again. I got the K-member in and finished up for the most part. Got the control arms back in. These control arms didn't really want to fit with the K-member. These control arms were originally meant for the BMR K-member, which is right there. In, in all reality, these control arms are meant to work with stock suspension and stock K-members and everything, so there's no reason that they shouldn't have fit, but they slid right in and out of the BMR K-member. But it was a bit of a fight to get these in. I would say the outside of the control arm is probably a quarter of an inch wider than the ears are allowing, so I had to basically form the ears again. And then form them back when I put the control arm back in. Got the rack back in, steering shaft is currently hanging down. The next thing that we ran into after we were done putting this K-member in is that the passenger side header still didn't fit. Originally, like I said, that header was hitting right here on the old K-member, but upon further inspection, this is the old one here. You can see where they had indented it there and also here. 
because not only was it hitting the cam member, which is this dimple here, but it was also hitting the frame rail. And I'm assuming that they hacked up their frame rail pretty bad to get these to fit. This came from a new edge Mustang, which would be 99 to 2004. So they probably hacked up the frame rail and then indented the header as well to get it to fit. The problem with coyotes, especially coyotes, is the cylinder heads and exhaust are extremely sensitive to what's called knock or detonation. The knock sensors sit underneath the intake manifold down the valley. You can kind of see them in there right there. And there's one on the other side. They lit, they're basically very sensitive microphones that listen for a specific frequency. So if you have the exhaust hitting the body somewhere, that could give you what's called false knock. False knock is obviously knock that is artificially produced mostly from the exhaust hitting the body somewhere. And with how close those headers would have been, even if I did clearance the frame rail, it still wouldn't have given us enough. Even though the motor does rock to the passenger side, still not something that I would like to risk, especially for an eight second capable car. So the alternative to the headers that he already had, which would be these light brown ones, besides another set of, I'm assuming these are Flowtech headers, which are made by Holly. The alternative to these would have been the ch next cheapest set of forward facing turbo manifolds for a Coyote are around $1,000, which is a little cost prohibitive in this situation. Not that Derek's afraid to spend the money, but obviously we would rather not have to if we don't. So I actually had a set of these for the King Cobra back when I was making the headers for that. I was originally going to make, I was gonna make it twin turbo. So I had forward facing turbo manifolds and I still had pictures of those on my phone and I went back and looked and from what I could tell, the collector for the passenger side was at a much different angle than it was for this one, That, from what I could tell. So I told him that we'd probably be better off, let's just try another set of flow techs, and if that doesn't work, we'll send them back and we'll go the more expensive option. So we get these, ironically, this is the driver's side manifold. They're pretty close to the same. The angle on the V-band is a little bit different. The one on the new one is tipped in a little bit, which would be tipped in towards the motor. These ones are a lot nicer. I'm assuming these are just a newer version of Flotex because as you can tell, the bends and everything are the same, manifold to manifold. The nice thing about the new ones is they have a scavenging spike in the center, whereas the old ones didn't. I'm not sure if these were steel or what, but the they started to rot pretty bad. So these ones I know are stainless, they're raw. You can get them in raw, polished, or ceramic coated. We just got the raw ones. Pretty close to the same thing. Passenger side, the tubes are all the same. But as you can tell by looking at it, the clicker is in a completely different position. This one's pointing up and slightly tipped in, whereas this one's, this collector is also tipped down a little bit, but also rolled in, which will keep it away from the frame rail. And it's also extended a little bit more than this one was. Like I said, these are probably, these were probably still Flotex. These are just a newer version. Holly lists these for a 2011 to current Mustang. Obviously, I think they'll fit in this situation too. We know the driver's side fit, but just sliding this one up when it was on the ground, it did seem like it fit a little bit better. It also did come with new V-bands. These are just the opposite end of the V-band for these here. V-bands work really well because they give you a lot better of a seal without having to use a gasket or anything. These are two perfectly machined surfaces. They go together like that, and then you have a clamp that goes around there and holds these two together with a lot of pressure. Another thing we're going to try to do, I'm going to talk to Derek about this, but we're going to use, instead of using the factory studs, we're going to use header bolts. I do like using the factory studs as much as I can, but in situations like this, you have the two top header bolts here and sometimes the back one too. It's really hard to get a wrench in here, especially on the driver's side. So it's a lot easier if you can use a small ratcheting wrench versus having to use the open end of a wrench to come in here and tighten these up. The only downside is, is header bolts can loosen up a little bit sometimes. We're also going to reuse the factory style exhaust manifold gaskets. These are the gaskets that come with them. They're just stamped composite material. Whereas the ones that come from Ford, they're a multi-layer steel gasket. The nice thing about these is if you use the studs on both ends here, you can slide those on the studs and it holds the gasket in place for you. We might end up using the studs on the ends just to keep the gasket in place. I think that'd be a good idea. But I'll talk to Derek about it and we'll see what he wants to do. So anyways, let's go ahead and get these headers back installed and we'll take it from there. Okay, there you guys, we are under the car. This is the radiator support just to give you a frame of reference to get yourself oriented with where we are in the car. This is the front of the engine. 
and this is the manifold. So it fits, but just barely. I don't know if you can see this, but just right there, there's hardly enough to fit a road map in between the frame rail and the header. So I marked it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up with the torch and just slightly push it in a little bit. Just enough to give us some room so we don't get some false knock. But other than that, I mean, it fits. The other one wouldn't even come close. We're gonna go ahead, I just gotta bolt it in three spots. I got the two studs in on top. Luckily, I did have to cut this one down to get it to be able to slide in because the passenger side is a lot tighter than the driver's side is. I got the two top studs in on the corners and I have one header bolt in pushing it down because if you have just the top two bolts in, it'll rock the flange so it'll be tighter at the top than it will be at the bottom which would effectively put it tighter here so i bolted it on top and bottom just to give us a better idea so let's go ahead and get this pulled back out and we'll heat it up okay there you guys we got the header on the bench i've got it fastened down just with some uh, wood screws into my bench top here i am out of oxygen with our oxyacetylene torch that's what i would normally be using for this i'm gonna try and use my map gas here all I'm going to do is get it heated up enough and I'm going to use some round stock and come in here with uh, and lay it on here with, and then ham hit it with a hammer. I don't like the way that it looks when you just bash the shit with the hammer. It looks kind of hacky in my opinion because you can tell it's what they did here. So I'm going to try and make this look as professional as I can, make it look like it could have came like that. That's what I like to do with a lot of my work. So we'll give that a shot. I'll put you on the tripod and we'll see what we can get done with this map gas. Okay, so what I got here, I got a impact socket. This is a 15 16 Harbor Freight Special I got here on the extension. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the map gas to get this line that I have scribed in. It's supposed to be red hot and with it being stainless, it really needs to be hot enough. And then I'm gonna come in here, lay the socket on there and hit it in as best I can. That's the goal, we'll see if we can get it done. All right, you guys, here we are back under the car again. As you can see, she fits like a glove. But we made it fit, so that was the main obstacle to get around. So now I can get the other side on and we will get the turbos hung and start making the pipes going from the header to the turbo. All right, you guys, we are back again. Had a little change of plans on what we're gonna do next. Originally, I said we were gonna hang turbos first and then get the, uh, the pipes from the headers to the turbos mounted. After thinking about it a little bit more, I thought it would be easier to hang the intercooler first and then hang the turbos off of that. What we're gonna try and end up doing here, right now I just have the intercooler. I have the one mount for this side done already. I was just holding it in there with some zip ties. What I'm gonna end up doing, we wanna just go be able to go straight into the intercooler with the turbo. So all we're gonna do is mount the turbo right in here so that the inlet will just point right into here. We'll hit it with silicone coupler and then we'll mount it right to the radiator support here. That's just gonna be what works out the best, I think, in this situation. On the other side, it's not gonna be quite as easy. So these are not mirror image turbos. The other turbo is, looks identical to this one. So if it's pointing in on this side, it's and you flip it around for the other side, it's not gonna be at the same level, obviously. It's on the other side. So what we're gonna have to do here, I did take off the bumper supports here. I'll have to make new ones because obviously the intercooler was going to interfere with what was there. Uh, I just made these out of, I wanna say this is an eighth inch plate here. So I'll weld it all the way around when I'm done. And then we'll make a bumper support out of DOM tubing so that we can use the bumper support that this originally had. My original idea was just to drill the spot welds out for the original bumper accordion pieces, the crumpled zones, whatever you'd like to call those. But unfortunately that didn't end up working. I had all the spot welds drilled out really nice so that I could have just taken it off cut a c-notch out of it so that the intercooler pipe could go through it but unfortunately i didn't realize that they go into the actual frame rail so to drill all those spot welds out you also have to drill the spot welds out for the frame rails and the radiator support which i did not want to do so this will work just as well this is just to hold bumper up and keep it from pushing in on itself when you get some wind resistance so back to what we were originally talking about with that turbo so obviously it's going to point this way and we can't go up any higher to have the turbo hanging down so that you can point straight in. So what I did was I got one of these cast aluminum elbows. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna cut the tube off here and weld this in. So then that way you can use a 90 degree silicone coupler to go from the turbo into this elbow into the intercooler. So you can see what I did here for the intercooler mount. 
All this is is some flat stock, flat two inch by eighth inch thick stock. And I wanna say that this is quarter or 3 16th inch round stock if I'm not mistaken. This is what the other side looks like. I still have to drill the holes in this one to mounts. Just uh, flat stock with a little S-bend put in it so it stands off from the radiator support. Nothing too serious. So let's go ahead and get this intercooler mounted and we'll take it from there. All right guys, as you can see, we got the other side intercooler mount finished up. And then we ran into the next problem that presented itself with this build. So this car, kind of, I'm not gonna say it's been trouble because it hasn't been, it's been pretty easy, but the problem is with this kit. This kit came from a new Edge Mustang and supposedly fit fine. No hacking or anything, but I, I just, I don't believe that. The problem is that this intercooler hangs below the radiator support by quite a bit. That's probably like an inch, inch and a half right there. The problem is this bumper mounts to the bottom. Mounts the intercooler support right here. And the intercooler sits basically right in here. So the outlet for the intercooler hits right here. And by the time you get a coupler and the four inch tube that we're gonna run out of it on it, it hangs down about two inches, which is just gonna be too much. Um, I'm assuming whoever had this kit, whoever made this kit, just hacked the bumper apart so that it fit, um, but that's just not gonna work for us. So uh, what we're probably gonna end up doing now is we're going to go ahead and get a different intercooler, just one that's a little bit shorter in the core, probably a treadstone. So that's probably gonna do it for this video, you guys. So we got a lot done in this video. I'm pretty happy with the progress we've made so far. This is the problem of buying a kit that wasn't professionally made some some people may not care about their cars as much as others so some people may be willing to cut their cars up whereas we're not willing to do that on this one uh, this is a very nice car and i think it's worth taking the time to do it right so we're gonna go ahead and get a different air cooler we'll pick the next video up when i have that from here on out after we get this new winter cooler it's all gonna be downhill i can start making the stuff because at that point it's not dealing with somebody else's stuff it's just gonna be making everything from scratch make sure if you like this video you like the video so that's gonna do it for this one, you guys. Y'all take care now.